is Miss Vermillion and I am an 8th grade math teacher from Powell Middle School. I have the opportunity to work with you this week on our weekly math objective. Our objective is, I can derive the equation for a line in the form y equals mx plus b given the slope of the line and a point. To get started with this, we're going to review y equals mx plus b. Let's get, let's get started with our review of slope intercept form. Slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. The first variable we're going to look at is our m. m represents the slope. Slope is your rate of change. To find slope on a graph, we find the rise over the run between any two given points on the line. On a table, we refer to slope as change in y over change in x. The triangle's name is delta, and delta means change. So when we read this, we read change in y over change in x. Now, all of these different ways to say slope mean the same thing. It sometimes helps us to refer to them in a different manner, given the type of problem we're looking at. The next variable we're going to look at is our y-intercept. B represents our y-intercept and is referred to as our initial value. Now on a graph and a table, our y-intercept is at the ordered pair 0, B. On a graph, this is where our line crosses the y-axis, forming the ordered pair 0, B. And on a table, it's where the x value is 0. We can review what all of this looks like on a coordinate plane. So we have our x-axis and our y-axis and any given line. To identify the y-intercept of this graph, we look where our line crosses the y-axis. So this point right here is your y-intercept. To find the slope of this line, we pick any two perfect points and you find their rise and the run between those two perfect points. So you have your rise and your run. Now the only other two variables we haven't talked about yet are your x and your y. x is known as your input value and y is known as your output value. These two create the ordered pairs that make all of the points to create your line. And remember that ordered pairs are x, comma, y. The next, the next activity we're going to look at is the Spark Your Learning activity provided by Knox County. It says, based on the data from a science experiment, Sierra graphs lines A, B, and C. Compare the lines. How are the graphs the same? How are the graphs different? The first thing I notice about these three lines is that they're never going to cross, which means they're moving at the same rate of change. We know that rate of change represents our slope, so we can make the conclusion lines A, B, and C have the same slope. Now we can check just to make sure, so finding any two perfect points on each of the lines, if I go from here to here, it's rise to run one. So the slope of line B is 2 over 1, which is 2. For A, if I go from here to here, that's rise to run 1. Line A has a slope of 2 as well. And line C, we rise from here to here, rise 2, run 1. So the slope of all three lines is 2. Next, let's look at their y-intercepts. Where do each of these three lines cross the y-axis. They all three cross in different spots. So the y-intercepts are what make these graphs different. So lines A, B, and C all have different y-intercepts. Line A's y-intercept is at 0, 0, 0. B has a y-intercept of 0, 2. 
and C has a y-intercept of 0, negative 2. So B equals negative 2. Now, if we look at each line, I know that they're never going to cross. There's a vocabulary word that classifies lines that are never going to cross. This vocabulary word is parallel lines. Parallel lines will never cross. They have the same slope and different y-intercepts. So our conclusion can be all three lines, A, B, and C, are parallel to one another. Now, some other aspects we can evaluate is last week, Miss Stennett talked to you about lines being proportional versus non-proportional. To be a proportional line, the line has to go through the origin, which is the ordered pair 0, 0. We only have one line that successfully does that, and that is line A. So line A is our only proportional line. Lines B and C are non-proportional. Now we're going to save this turn and talk for the end of our activities. Next, let's look at taking for a ride. This, act this activity says use the graphs to answer the questions. Problem A says find the rate of change in the graph. What does it represent? Earlier we reviewed that the rate of change is our slope. So we're going to find the slope of this graph. Earlier we reviewed find slope you use rise over run creating your slope triangle. Last week, Ms. Stennett used the slope formula to find slope between two points. So now we're going to review a third method for finding slope using a table of values. We're going to take the two ordered pairs that they've used and put them into a t-chart. So we're going to use 0, 250, and 1, 4. Now we're going to use our slope which is change in y over change in x. Okay. To find our change in y, we look at how do you go from 250 to 4. You add $1.50, so our change in y is $1.50. To go from 0 to 1, you add 1, so that's your change in x. We can simplify this fraction. 150 divided by 1 gives me a slope of $1.50. So the rate of change for this graph is $1.50. The second part of this question asks us, what does it represent? Well, our x-axis is labeled distance in miles, and our y-axis is labeled cost in dollars. We can use this to help us interpret what our slope means to us by considering our change in y is change in cost, and our change in x is change in distance in miles. So to interpret this, we have change in cost over change in miles. Well, our cost changes $1.50 every one mile. So it will cost $1.50 for every mile B says Company B wants to compete with Company A. It will have the same initial fee as Company A, but a lower price per mile. Write the equation of the function that could represent the total cost Y of using Company B's ride-sharing service for a trip of X miles. Then graph your equation. So reading back through, we see that they want our initial fee to be the same. Earlier we reviewed that your initial fee is your Y-intercept and that its variable is B. So we know that we want this to be the same value for both company A and company B. To get this value, we're going to look back to the graph for company A. We know that the y-intercept is where our line crosses the y-axis, which is at the point 0, 2.5. So the B value for both equations is going to be $2.50. 
Now, it says that they want a lower price per mile for our slope. Earlier, we found that the slope of company A is $1.50. So we know that we want our M, your slope, to be less than $1.50. Anything that satisfies that inequality will make this true for problem B. I'm going to choose my slope to be equal to 1. I'm going to charge $1 for every mile taken with the ride sharing service. Now we can use this information to create our equation in slope intercept form. So we have y equals m, which I chose to use 1, x plus $2.50. Our initial fee is $2.50 and I'm charging a dollar per mile taken by the company. So our equation for company B is y equals 1x plus $2.50. Next, they want us to graph this equation for company B. So we're going to start by plotting our y-intercept. We know that B equals 250, so that's going to be at the ordered pair 0, 250. So we're going to go 0, 2.5. Then we're going to use our slope to find all additional points for the line. Your slope is 1, but we need it as a fraction so we have a rise and a run. So 1 as a fraction is 1 over 1, and that's our rise over run. So from 250, we're going to rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1 as many times as possible until you've plotted all points on the graph. We're going to connect our points because we may not travel a full mile every time and each of those satisfies our equation. So now we've created the equation for company B and we've graphed it. I now challenge you to create your own equation for company B that satisfies the requirements of the question using a different slope other than one. For our, ne for our next example, we're gonna work the following problem. It says, create an equation for the line that goes through the point 410 and has a slope of 3. To get started, we're going to recognize we're going to use slope-intercept form to make our equation. Remember that slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Our equation tells us that our slope is 3, so m equals 3. And our ordered pair we're using is 410. We reviewed earlier that ordered pairs are made up of input and output values. So we have an x value of 4 and a y value of 10. We're going to substitute what we know into our equation and solve for our missing y-intercept. So we have a y of 10, so y equals 10 equals m is 3 times your x value, which is 4, plus b. 3 times 4 is 12, so we get 10 equals 12 plus b. Our goal is to isolate the variable b, so we're going to move all of our terms away from it. To cross the equal sign, we have to use the opposite operation. So we have a positive 12, and the additive inverse of that is negative 12. So we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. 10 minus 12 is negative 2 equals b. So we've solved for our y-intercept. Now we can substitute back into our equation. So I have y equals our m is 3, x, and our b is negative 2, so we're going to put minus 2. So the equation of the line that has a slope of 3 and goes through the point 4, 10 is y equals 3x minus 2. Now that we've worked through some of the problems found on the worksheets provided by Knox County, let's review our objective. It was I can derive the equation for a line in the form y equals mx plus b given the slope of the line and a point. To sum up this lesson, I challenge you to do two things. I challenge you to finish your turn and talk questions in your packet and then in addition create two ordered pairs and write the equations for the line that they would create. I hope that you found this lesson helpful and that you have a wonderful rest of your week.